Hi, I'm Kate Robinson. I'm an undergraduate art history student here at Indiana University, and today I hope to bring you a small glimpse of two pieces in our museum's collection and a brief look into a theme in art across cultures, ceremonial drinking. We are all familiar with the concept of ceremonial drinking. In our society, we can see it in a celebratory toast. This can be used in almost any setting, from a casual evening out to a more ceremonial marriage, we raise our glasses together as one and share a common message. We run through the ritual, the raising, the clinking, and the sipping. This has become so casual that we tend to overlook that this is also a toast to a common connection that has the capacity to cross borders around the world and travel throughout time. The first piece we will look at from our collection takes us to ceremonial drinking in ancient Greece. Created in 480 BCE, this red-figured Greek kylix is attributed to an artist who has come to be called the Foundry Painter. This artist was known as a Greek realist and is famed for his ability to accurately portray daily Greek life while upholding the ideals of Greek society. It is called red figure because this describes the technique utilized for painting. Red figure was a style of painting that first appeared around 530 BCE. Before this style, the predominant style was called black figure painting. The black figure technique was carried out by painting the desired design with black glaze on the surface of the red clay. Red figure is essentially the opposite of this. Red figure is executed by painting the black glaze onto the background so the figures and designs are left in the natural red-orange clay color. The details are then painted in with black line. The kylix itself is essentially a wine cup. It has a small, deep bowl that comes up from a short stem. The stem sits on a simple foot, and on either side of the kylix, there are two handles that curve upward and out to just above the lip of the cup. The outside of the kylix contains an image of six figures, all preparing for some kind of battle. There are shields, weapons, and helmets strewn about as the figures prepare. The specific location of the scene is ambiguous, but charged with energy and excitement as these figures prepare for the unknown battle. There is also an image on the inner bowl of the kylix called the Tondo. Here we find a painting of a lone man in quiet contemplation. He poses with a helmet to the viewer's left and a heavy cloak to the right, as he tests the flexibility of his weapon. His pensiveness and intense focus would have only been revealed to the drinker after the wine had been completely drained from the vessel, perhaps as a message of promoting self-reflection or contemplation after the wine has been consumed. Kylixes were primarily used at symposia, which were all male aristocratic Greek banquets. These banquets, probably most famed through Plato's story Symposium, consisted of philosophical discussion, feasting, and very importantly, drinking. Decorative kylixes, among other types of drinking cups, were commonplace at these banquets and brought the men together in a common action, in a common body of people. This idea of community through drinking ceremonies is not lost among other cultures. It remains true even across the globe in the Pacific Islands. Here, we focus on a Samoan kava bowl in the museum's collection. This is a large wooden bowl that has some fiber and shells strung around one of the bowl's eight legs. It is deep and wide because it is made to sit on the ground in front of a man sitting with his legs crossed preparing a drink called kava, or ava in Samoa. It is used this way throughout the Pacific Islands. The root comes from a kind of pepper plant whose scientific name is Piper methysticum, but it is commonly called kava or ava as well. The Almaga, who is the assistant to the chief, prepares the drink. There is a variety of ways to prepare the root, but essentially it is boiled, dried, and ground. It is then mixed with water and strained, and the drink is ready for the ceremony. The participants sit in a circle or ellipse, and the kava is presented in a cup to each person individually, in hierarchical order. Beginning with the chief, the server passes it around until everyone has had his or her cup. This kava ceremony is a significant part of all important events in the Pacific Islands. It can begin a large feast or celebration. It brings people together in an amiable event, much like the Symposia of Attic Greece, or a toast at a celebratory dinner party. These two different ceremonies 
are about coming together and acceptance of one another. A guest participating in a kava ceremony would be welcomed into a closer realm of Samoan society than an outsider who did not participate. Likewise, a new member invited to a symposium would be welcomed with a sense of camaraderie that is built on the common experience. Just as the two ceremonies have similarities, they also differ in many ways. One difference is that the kava ceremony is a very structured process in which the drinking of the kava is done in a very particular way, and the specific process is the key part to the ceremony. A Greek symposium is closer to what we think of as a dinner party with friends. The activity is primarily focused on enjoying company and discourse of others, and the drinking of wine is only part of the tradition. While there are many other differences between these two societies, the emphasis should not be placed on them. Instead, the focus should be on the common threads shared. Ceremonial drinking is a part of many cultures, and this is only a small connection found in the Indiana University Art Museum. I hope it gives a small glimpse to help us realize how permeable the boundaries of different cultures are in different ways. So no matter what kind of society you come from, or whether you are drinking from a champagne flute, sipping wine from a kylix, or passing the kava, take a moment to appreciate the universal themes across cultures that art can elicit.